Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO Losses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Vosnesinski Lover, but right now we gotta talk about the route march. Kirov nodded to the officer. My squad is ready for the march, officer. We are preparing to move the first five kilometers on your go. Beside him, the squad rustled in its frantic activity. Water canteens needed filling, loaded bags, checking, rifles inspecting. There were barely enough hands on deck to accomplish it all. As the officer lumbered away, Kirov whispered, Crap bag, what an insufferable son of a gun! And scheduling this gosh darn idiotic march on a Friday after evening of all things, did the colonel have his brain installed where his butthole was meant to be? God, it was intolerable, and the only reason why he put up with it all was because the Republican Army was still the finest pension fund in all the Republic. Kirov was a man of faith. He had faith only what men could bring him, that was. And having looked through the pension plans, he knew exactly what the next few decades would bring him, assuming he lived through it all. Well, time to stop speculating on the future of the present. And a squad awaited him. He moved towards the squad. Are you lot ready to go? Get your thumbs out of your butts, gentlemen. It's time to start hauling booty. And, the, uh, and if you've, you've lot have taught me anything, it's that men without brains can get very, very far in life. It's time to start putting that theory to practice. Let's check out a skip the squad and Kirov's gaze shot to its source. Glaring at the conscript, Kirov let the coldness of the evening into his voice. Did you think that was funny, Private? Don't give me an answer. You'll have time to think about it on guard duty tomorrow. Double shifts, he turned to the rest of the squad. Get ready to move one mic and... Anyone else who thinks themselves a clown can let me know I still have a roster to fill. Darn private, he had the whole squad left, and, and right now we're opening the gates. Back when we were a smaller power, much of our trade was confined to Russia only. As a current regional power, we need to start branching out to other nations beyond the motherland, especially the democratic countries around the world. Now that we have some coastal territory in the northern Russia, it would be beneficial for us to establish a merchant marine operating around the White Sea, protecting it, protected by a few of our ships. Now, right now, all oh, last democracies across the seas, Lessons from the last war, which will improve military professionalism, have some armor technology, and increase military training, as well as get a reduction for land doctrine, which means nothing. Versus lessons from the unification wars, which gives us more army XP, which we don't really need too much more of. Uh, we need some, but not too much. A bonus for weapons or infantry, which infantry equipment, which is really nice. Versus tactical flexibility, which will slowly improve military professionalism, but also give us land doctrine, which means nothing. Overall, I like the blueprints and army XP, but <clears throat> I think army professionalism or military professionalism is really the way to go. Our most recent conflict, the West Russian War, was full of genius tactics and offensives issued by commanders on both sides. We must look back on what worked for us in that war, how we carried a combat, or carried out combat, and used logistics to conquer our enemy. We can't neglect our opponent's strategy to win the war either, as his forces often fought to the very end. We must adapt these tactics to our current military in order to grow stronger. Nice. Better planes? Yes, please. And it is almost 1960, my friends. Last time we did take out Omsk. Those poor sons of guns who decided to, uh, well, die on our way to glory, so... Uh, I gotta love it when the enemies want to kill themselves. Jet fighters, yes. Jet casts. Or basic jet casts, I guess, at the very least. But that was from the last war. And then study foreign strategy. To improve our military strategy, we need to look at the top armies of the world. Germany, Japan, and the U.S. We must observe the swift German blitzkrieg across Europe. Japan's burning advance into China. America's brave defense of Scotland. Even the South African war had plenty of cutting tactics from both the U.S. and German Reich. And they were carried out with the newest weapons available. Sometimes foreign military strategies are the most useful. As we're doing or advancing the developmental subsidies, which is pretty nice. As we are trying to rapidly get rid of poverty. Rapidly, rapidly, rapidly. Only 40 production units, main battle tanks. At this point, I don't really use tanks anymore in TNO. Because they're way too expensive to make. You don't get enough of them. And I'd rather use planes. Or chop choppers, really, actually. I'd rather have a bigger air force than choppers. So, that's what we're doing. And we now have 4.5 billion uh, yearly surplus, which is nice. Growth could be better, but... We have already maxed out civilian spending as well. <clears throat> so overall, we could be in a lot worse position. Lot, 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 lot worse. Only 1.2. Vosnesinski announces his retirement. What? You're not allowed to retire. Shocking news comes from the Western Russian Free Republic today as its first and longest lasting president. Nikolai Vosnesinski has announced his retirement at the end of his term, and he will no longer be seeking an additional term as president. Originally elected in 58 after spending a year as its head of state, President Voznesensky went on to be elected two more times in 63 and 67, by convincing margins under his leadership. While his popularity was far from what it once was, he's been able to keep the young and unstable republic from breaking apart. Voznesensky has not explicitly endorsed a successor, although it is expected. He is he's going to endorse his party's primary winner for the 1971 election. Many in the republic, however, cannot imagine another man to fill his shoes. Whether their successor can maintain order remains to be seen, of course. A modernized force? Yes. We're going to rapidly improve our military professionalism, because right now it's only on medical interference, and that's not very high. A modernized force. Though our Russian Republican army is mightier than Russia, it does not compare to the contemporary forces of the three global superpowers. Many of our tactics and weapons are from the German Soviet War over 20 years ago. It's time to bring the RRA to the modern age. We will renovate the army by increasing the military budget, investing in the new military technologies, and exploring the most recent military tactics. In the end, the Russian Republican army will become a Cold War era ready force to be reckoned with. 
Uh, of course, we can reunify Russia, but there's no point to do that right now. Um, save some of our political power, probably still. That'd be good. That'd be quite good. We're still building up more hospitals, even though we don't really need it. Roads, army bases, stuff like that. Good stuff. As we do have quite a few divisions. Oh, also, the... Was it Tomsk or whoever? Did unify, and they are still beating up these two, who are still killing each other in 1969. So, I was right when they said, like, when I said, like, sometimes these guys can't do anything anymore. Like, the AI just cannot handle this, which sucks. So, uh, the war room. It was like every other evening at the foreign strategy office, both way too long and ridiculously short for the work. Another exercise was planned the following week, and the commanding officer had just put everyone on standby for emergency planning duty. Officer uh, Nabotov had been on the emergency duty the last 24 hours in a row, and the map wasn't swimming in front of him. It was doing victory laps in his eyes. Shaking his head, he took another swig from the jealously hoarded coffee ration and looked again at his pr proof texts. He had to make sure the maps fit together, darn it, and in their proper order. There had to be some applicability of the manual for an operational doctrine here. What, what if he were to transpose that West Russian counteroffensive onto the local terrain? Specifically, the one that led through the North Urals like so and so. The terrain maps proved his undoing. The planned advance of the armored column would move through a valley he couldn't recon, and it was only a choke point for miles. No. The strategy employed by the armored corps wouldn't work unless they wanted to rapidly turn their finest armor into smoking junk. Nubbled outside, how on earth would he make this offensive work in the five hours he had left? He barely noticed the commanding officer approach, but he did smell the pungent cigarette fumes on his breath. Trouble planning this. Here, try this reference. American work. British defense. Good for the terrain. Armor strength. Part... 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 Parity. Might need a little rework, though. And the CO was gone as Nabatov's eyes widened behind him. Yes, he thought he, as he flicked through the manual, this would work. This would work. His legs turned to jelly from the exultance and stress. Nabatov scribbled a few hasty notes and rose to find the strategic briefing notes. And then, for the first time in two days, he could sleep. A small victory. Blow a kiss, fire a gun. Blow a gun, fire a kiss. Strategic professionalism. Ooh. Mystery defense. I should have saved a lot of our army XP. Oh, well. Reopen the Vyaka General Staff Academy. The Tsarist of Russia had once had a famous academy that was used to train new officers for the general staff, and it was time to re revive the academy. It would be used to pump out the best of the best generals for army and improve the officer corps with effort. It could become one of the top military academies in all of Russia. And goodbye. Goodbye. That Mr. Mustache Man in Irkutsk. You go to. Goodbye. 54% poverty rate is too much poverty for me. Pretty much. Temp tax hike? Probably wouldn't be worth it. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be worth it at all. Drop tanks. Oh, yeah. That'd be very good, too. Just want more economy, more growth. More growth, please, please. Meeting at the station. An airland battle? Nice. I get more organization, too. For the last time, officer, I'm not handing over the strategy of this country to a council that thinks the army can be relegated to a secondary priority. The thud of a binder punctuated the last words, and Strykov flinched, or Strykov. At least the command had an aim for his head this time. If the council truly believes that this newfangled strategy is what is best, I think it is best that we safeguard the real power far away from them until they are disputes of the notion. Strelkov nodded helplessly. Commander Grigorenko, please, this is not a usurpation or anything of the sort. We're simply attempting to better strategy now that our air force is in working condition. After all, we are in the Republic. We cannot afford casualties the same way large countries can. Another binder thought, and this one louder than the first. You are delusional if you think that the airline strategy will safeguard our losses. Strelkov, I have been working for close to a decade in the military, and our entire operational doctrine has been configured to work with combined armored infantry operations. The air force will only complicate the state of affairs by stealing resources and money from us. Strokov needed his samples. Commander, there's, there's to be no stealing. We'll allocate funds to, as we deem fit for the health of the Republic. Moreover, we're aware that the transition to airland battle will take quite a while, which is why we need you on board. Who else could train with us? Grigorenko simply shook his head. Tell your council that they have two options. They can stick with my suggestions, or they can stumble around in the dark by themselves. I will not stand for the strategic blunder, and I cannot live with myself if I were to further it. Now, go. Let's stick with infantry primacy. Airland battle sounds promising. Yes, it does. Strategic supremacy. When it comes to war... Weapons are only as good as the person handling them. Offensive and defensive tactics are only as effective as the commander issuing them. We must strive for the greatest tacticians in all of Russia and defeat our enemies through superior tactics alone at the end of the day. As our military maneuvers that will set us apart or set us above our fiercest opponents. Or improve? Yes, please. More war support, which we could absolutely use because this entire campaign we've had some very, very, very low war support. Only minus 0.5. Well, Africa is a god awful mess. Jesus Christ. Oh, it's so bad. I don't ever use tactical bombers either. 4.3 billion. Hey, 7% growth. Not bad. Central Siberian Republic. Hope you're struggling more, 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 more. You have, like, no divisions and no manpower. You have a lot of manpower. Lek... Lekachov. Lekachov. Nice. Meeting at the station. God, this place is far. 
Sokolov grumbled as he checked the timing for the truck. His rusty old wrist watch had been a gift from Dad, but there was no sign of his father's precision now as he watched the dusty road. It's been, it had been, if this little contraption was accurate, almost half an hour since the scheduled delivery to the military academy. How the heck was he supposed to get there on time? Yes, far indeed. I've been waiting 45 minutes myself. There was a twinkle in the other man's eyes. Sokolov signed as him up. Suspicious as a minor son in a poor district could be of someone who looks suspiciously bourgeois, dressed in relatively well tailored clothing with a little cap to stave off the wind, this man looked like nothing like he'd been told to encounter. I don't believe we've met. I'm Simeon. You? Sokolov glared at the hand and then relented and shook it. <clears throat> I'm Sokolov, South Assictive Car. Are you with the Academy? Simeon, if that is what his real name was, nodded. His f smile from on his face. Well, then, I suppose we will get acquainted eventually. What's your designated specialization? The man rustled about in his breast pocket and pulled out a crumpled piece of paper. Oh, I'm assigned to artillery and fire control. Your infantry standards, I, I take it. I know they like taking a lot of them these days, these, them these days, and you seem the type. Sokolov nodded, chuckling a bit. I can't believe they sent me to the Vyak after sending me into the rough bodies. I think the army wants to kill me between the both of us. Simeon chuckled back, and the air between them grew easy. Why did you sign up? This course ain't going to be easy for any of us. The man seemed almost shy, the same reason as you. I love my country. He waved to the fields around them. Boundless as a sky itself, and I want to keep it free. Sokolov nodded. The two were very different, but they were going to get along just fine. The owner's boys and leave his men. Uh, this is all nice. Uh, across the seas. We already enjoy diplomacy with several European nations, but we must all look beyond our home continent for potential allies. Though North America is a distant continent, it serves as a pedestal for the last shining beacon of democracy left on Earth. We should seek to establish connections with Mexico, Canada, and the U.S. in order to gain more international recognition and more embassies on the western side of the Atlantic. Nice. Visit to Washington? Apply for OFN aid? Armored Corps, like I said before, not really going to bother with that too much, but it looks like we're looking pretty good right there. Better transports? Nice. Uh, stuff will come all swimmingly. Very nice, very nice, very nice. Ooh, I forgot to do this one. Oh, my bad. It's almost a decade behind times. Oh, boy. Not good. Oh, it went down from 7%. That sucks. 13.2%. Not bad. 3.99. Could be worse. Could be a lot worse. Oh, would you look at that? Helicopter. We'll go with interception stuff first. And then, the last democracies of Europe. With the rapid expansion of ideologies like fascism and national daddyism, it has become increasingly important for democratic nations to band together during the time of crisis. <clears throat> Essentially, we need to reach out for any European democratic hand we can hold on to, and that we must appeal for diplomatic relations with these rare countries. Together, we will form a continental bulwark against the evil th threat of authoritarian regimes. Could ask for more manpower, but now nah, we're okay. Oh, now what? 3.99. Oh, good. It slowly went down. Just a little more. Very nice. Minus 4.48. Not enough. Where are we at? Secondary schooling. That's not bad. Not bad. Agriculture is looking very good. Mass mechanization. We'll definitely get to modern agriculture. Uh, function administration. Oh, we'll definitely get to uh, streamlined bureaucracy, which will be very good. More stability, more political power, less supply consumption. Just good stuff overall. Factory complexes. Not bad. We'll get there probably eventually too. Military professionals, maybe. We'll see. Ah, oh, democracies. Formal contact with democratic European nations in order to expand our diplomatic reach. Sounds like a smart idea. Infantry equipment trials. Our soldiers require high quality guns for use in the field, and unfortunately, all we have are World War II era rifles and whatever left from the Zatal's merchants. We must hold trials and competitions to develop a new standard infantry rifle that can be mass produced for our men. Better guns means more of the enemy we can kill to win the war. Pretty much. And we're still building up. Oh, infantry. I mean, I mean, infrastructure. I mean, it's not really important to build up infrastructure, but at this point, I'm really not sure what else we can really build and use, so. Also, at this point, I think we're done building militia. I think we have more than enough. 20 combat is what the AI is using, but we, I prefer this division. Actually, air assault would be so nice to use. I would love to have air assault, but I don't have enough of that. But it's so strong. More soft, way more soft attack, hard attack, breakthrough, defense. It gives you a recon, a suppression, I guess, too. Lowers organization, but not by much. You get more HP, way more piercing. An incredible amount more piercing, which is awesome. But, who am I? Another month, 52% is not bad. 6.5%, level less, 3.2. It was really, last month I think it was 3.6 million, so. Or billion, I guess I should really say. It's not bad. Not bad whatsoever. Oh, we can make some railway guns too, that'd be kind of nice. Divisions and basic training, that's fine. Manpower, how much do we get today? 0.3, not great. We have a total of 24% war spot, which is some of the highest we've had in a while. 60 car arsenal hurts us. Conscription policies. Embassy funding? Mm, a plea for recognition. 
Yeah, let's, let's appeal for recognition first. Even though we are a regional power in Russia, some countries still see us as just another warlord state. Diplomatic recognition is the first big step in becoming a relevant world power, the defender of democracy we aspire to be. We must call upon nations like the US, Iberia, England, and Italy, and convince them that we are a legitimate state and deserve diplomatic recognition. I keep going back to the screen because it's so important. Yeah, and there was a thing happening in Italy, but whatever. Oh, wow. Spain, you, you kind of suck. Ah, uh, Ballman. National Socialist Corporatism. I love it. Uh, what do we know about them? They have a lot of manpower, a lot of factories, secondary schooling, mine research facilities, mass mechanization, professional army, and party state. How, can we see, how much can we see what their GDP is like? One party state, state religion, state controlled. They have ministers, Hevel, Lang, Balda, Rashirak. Who is this person? Müller. Oh, he's pretty good, actually. State oppression, traditional roles, penal slavery, outlawed. Oh, what is this? I'm not entirely sure, but happy 1970, everybody. Intel, industry, and, um, can't really tell, which does kind of suck. Oh, uh, blow a KS fire a gun. Appeal for recognition, of course. Korn Korinov have the gun stuck ahead of him. There it was. The defect he'd been wa warned about it was clear as day now. It had just been a little forward, forcing the shooter's position down by hair's breath, perhaps. <clears throat> it was except the hotels, where standards were low as Altai Basin's dunes, but not here. He lowered the gun and began to pour over the blueprints scattered around him in a half blossom. Perhaps it had been the material, or perhaps it was the structural cause in the site. The latter would explain why the soldiers on the testing squad had complained so bitterly about the loading and loading drills, something about the barrel then, but the reports had focused on the firing mechanism itself. So could it possibly be that? Perhaps, maybe in the way the barrel interacted with the firing pin? Yes, perhaps the explosion of the shot had cracked something with him. A passing soldier yelled, Koronov, how did it work? It's almost lunch. He, barely looking up, greeted him and told him in no uncertain terms to go away. The soldier giggled as he left. It was adorable, the way Koronov was so immersed in his work, he was blind to everything else. Absolutely adorable. Now the, uh, Koronov's mind was far away, however. The rifle, as did all the equipment he'd been given, preoccupied him. Some solution needed to be found in the meantime. The barrel problem would be probably need a full rework of the design, perhaps even a back-to-basics test, but the main problem, as he saw it, was the drooping. Perhaps, yes, that would have to do. Koronov scribbled, put some extra stock on the rifle, and, and tell him to, to aim higher. Satisfied, he nodded and went on to the next rifle. Every soldier needs something to lean on. Oh, okay. Ministry of Defense. In the process of upgrading our military, it is imperative that we expand our general staff to meet the new army standards. We'll have to provide our generals with updated data from the battlefields around the world and keep them informed about the latest military training methods. We must also streamline the Ministry of Defense bureaucracy in order to improve the effectiveness of our leading commanders. Science. Education. Jetcast. Yay! Happy 1970, everybody. Oh, anti-air as well would be very nice, too. How much do we have of everything? Uh, not a lot, but that's not a bad amount. We need way more attack helicopters. Attack helicopters. We actually have not a bad amount of fighters, too. Very nice. Um, Ministry of Defense, thank you. Train, 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 train. Yeah, actually, are you guys training at all? Mm, you have to train. But you should do this instead and go over here. Yay. America recognizes us. A diplomatic message has arrived from London. Oh, well, not London, but uh, for Washington and Rome. The government of the United States of America and the Italian Empire intends officially recognize our West Russian Republic as a sovereign state and treat us as such in all diplomatic conduct. The support of the U.S. and Italy in the OFN, uh... It was a major diplomatic victory for us and undoubtedly helped us secure a place on the world stage. Hail Colombia, as well as Hail Grazia Italia. But England says no. A diplomatic message arrived from London. Conti because of the in continued instability in Russia, the difficult logistics of establishing diplomatic relations and ongoing tensions with Germany, they have declined to recognize us as a sovereign state or as a legitimate representative of Russia. Though certainly a disappointing blow to our ambitious ambitions on the world stage, we must press onwards. But anyways, well, that sucks. But Italy is in the Japanese sphere, which is really very weird. You guys are isolated for now. And then, uh... So we got basically part of the sphere and the OFN. Not bad. 
but a visit to Washington. Thank you, America. Ever since our democracy's first form of ashes of the Union, the Soviet Union, one of our biggest diplomatic goals was someday to meet the President of the U.S. of A. and discuss the global defense of liberty. Nikolai Vosnesen, our own President of the Republic, would like to establish a meeting with U.S. President Margaret Chase Smith in Washington. We will take any opportunity to meet the wonderful American people, and if the proposed summit goes well, it will be another diplomatic achievement we can cross off. Absolutely. State welfare? Better poverty? Sure, as long as the game says it helps us out. God, the poverty rate change gets, keeps on getting lower. More than half of the population still lives in poverty, which sucks. Uh, Kostigin is still here. Stalin is still here. Shevardovich is still here for some reason. And then power vacuum for communism. Wow, the growth has really slowed down. Uh, this has gone up a little bit higher now. That sucks. 4.6 billion. Kind of sucks. But whatever. Whatever. Ooh, production units. Nice. You know what, for now, actually add them to here. As much as I want more military stuff, and we definitely need more military factories, we're doing okay-ish. Not bad, but okay-ish. Um, go five and go five for both of these because we just need more. There hadn't been a fist fight in the General HQ for quite a while now, so Cold Call was taken by surprise when the latest iteration broke out. It had been too. One minute there was a reasonable discussion regarding prioritization of funding to be given to the military research department. The next a full-on fist fight had been in progress, with men in the middle age on both sides struggling to restrain each other or deck their peers. Korolkov sighed another day in the Ministry of Defense and its assembled glories. Well, glories was a strong term, but he lacked another word for it. <clears throat> At least this paper will be of use to the Republic, a paper drafted by one of his staffers on the movement of hybridized troops in the last days of the West Russian War, and know how to make it applicable to the Republic's current situation. Pouring through its conclusions, Kolokov nodded, making notes in the margins. There was plenty of work to be done to bring the military up to parity with its contemporaries, and this would definitely, definitely help. A double-headed member of the general staff approached him, and Korolkov got up to show the formalities. Stand down, I'm looking for a paperback. Something to fill the gaps on someone's chair. Hmm, have you seen any spare binders? Preferably something slim. Ah, this will do. And the paperwork was snatched from Korolkov's desk. The general staff member retreated, and Korolkov needed his temples in frustration. This was a third day promotion, and already he missed nothing more than the lowly status of his previous position. The public, he was certain, was doomed regardless, but at least he had been blind to it beforehand. My goodness, what a disaster. And apply for OFN aid. Though our current diplomatic status with the OFN is quite limited, we could use some foreign aid to continue building up our country. Our democratic government located in the middle of the ravaged Russia should be enough to convince the OFN of officials to grant its status as a prospective member a partner nation. It may be the first step on the road to becoming a proper defender of a democracy, like our American brethren. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. We want more growth. We need better surplus. America, recognize us, please. So we get more factory output, construction speed, more growth multiplier, consumer goods production factor. Um, okay, that's very interesting from decentralization, that's not bad. From our economy type, of course. From centralization, you get more output. From the decentralization, you get more construction speed. Interesting. 10% versus 10% over there. Okay, visit Washington. Thank you. Apply for aid. They agreed to meet with us. The U.S. government responded to our proposal for a meeting between our presidents with a resounding yes. As a major success with the diplomatic efforts will undoubtedly raise our prestige in the world stage. We should prepare a plane at once. Hopefully, the government of the British Isles will allow us to use their airports. Says off? Well, they probably won't. Our president visits the White House. Nice. The Russian Re Republican Air Force. One of the most valuable lessons the world learned from the devastating Second World War was the importance of air superiority and close air support of ground troops, unfortunately. The Soviet Air Force could not complete with the Luftwaffe 20 years ago. Soviet planes were often out of date, and pilots did not have sufficient training. We should create a proper air force for Komi by building more air bases, recruiting top-of-the-line pilots, researching the latest models for fighters and bombers, and constructing powerful airplanes that rest control the skies and rain death on enemy cities. Washington. The President of the West Russian Republic arrived in Washington today for a multi-day state visit. After being greeted by the Secretary of State at the Washington National Airport, the West Russian President was driven to the White House, where they met with the President of the United States. According to a statement put out by the White House, topics of discussion include the ongoing instability in Russia and possible reunification, the role of the United Russia in the future of Europe, and the furthering economic ties between the two countries after all, or afterwards. The press was invited to take photos. It was clear the West Russian Republic is both aligned with the U.S. and, and on the rise on the eyes of the free world. A triumph for democracy. Nice. Oh, that, that's so much better than it was before. Come on, listen, half of the population better better not live in poverty? Better not. Or I'll beat them up. I'll put them in poverty. Can we get port access, please? About a month left. Half the month. That's good. Ah, militia. Looking not completely terrible. Apply for aid and Air Force. Will they say yes? They reject. Oh, come on. This morning news just come to us from Washington. While the American governors noted our offer of basing rights on the whites, he had his benefits. And they desire continually positive diplomatic relations. The 
The price tag was ultimately too high for them to justify. Negotiations over the agreement broke down, unfortunately, they broke down quite publicly. Word of the failure has already made its way to the press, and some commentators are calling for the foreign minister to resign over the matter. With the diplomatic row and, uh, and the loss of potential financial life lands, has clearly been a major blow to our government standing. Why can't people just blame the Americans? Well, we do, anyways. Embassy funding. Now that we've received a diplomatic recognition from some major powers, major world powers, we need to establish official embassies in each country that recognize us as a legitimate state. We'll have to set aside part of our budget to maintain these embassies, but we'll also enjoy full diplomatic relations with several leading nations and a small part to pay for a spot on the world stage. Abzo positively loot de Lille. Russian reunification. Still want to expand this way, way, way more. Less than half the population now lives in poverty. Thank goodness. Agriculture. Admin efficiency is rapidly improving, which is awesome. Awesome possum. Awesome possums. Hopefully, we get some investment money, too. Our treasure can only pay for so many of the projects we started to transform the country. And now it's time to relook to foreign, foreign investment. Thankfully, we can negotiate a deal with the new countries that have recognized us. We can assure these countries that, that if they desire to invest in our republic, our debts will be paid back tenfold, and every country involved will benefit. Oh, they better benefit. Uh, oil? Anything here? Yeah. Nice. We have w plenty now of grid power. Actually, we're using quite a bit of it up, too, but... Plenty of grid power for now. 6% some of that. 5 billion is nice. Very nice. Less than 3 billion in debt. Just wait until we convert these divisions back over. A united government for now. Ah, oh, it's so nice. Happy June, everybody. 48.89. Not bad. Current poverty effects. Hurts our research speed. Economic base. Personnel cost industry modifier. Awesome. Just awesome. Ooh. We need more war sport cell. So. Whatever can help us get more war sport. That's what I care about. 2.4. Cold War. Um, well, America is sucking hard in this timeline. They sucked hard. Holy crap. They got total defeat in South African War. Bad for Italy. They lost as well. Wow, America. Jeez. Uh, improve on the Armored Corps. The only available tanks that we have are from the Second World War, and they do not compete with the armored forces of Germany, Japan, and the U.S. In order to make a swift advance and blast our enemies to pieces, we need to improve the quality of our tanks significantly. We'll hold trials to see who can produce the most effective armored tanks that we can use for the army, hopefully. The end result will be a tank that can compete with that of our rivals. The new Hussars? Oh, yes, please. Yes, yes, please. Expand the power grid, we get weekly stability. Uh, let's increase the state GDP. We could do that, why not? Screw it, why not? Give yeah, us more debt, but whatever. Whatever. And less than a month for industrial management. Nice. Right, let's get the next month. Come on. Zoom in so we can speed the game up just that much more. Rodionov. Malyshev. Kantorovich. <clears throat> and if you'd like to hear about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. As well as... Ligachev. What is bread we think of thee? Nice. Very nice. Well, we're done with modern agriculture. We're there already. God, getting this one won't be so good. Call for investments. And the Russian Republican Navy. Many years have passed since Russia had a navy she could be proud of. Over 20 years ago, the Kriegsmarine ravaged the Soviet Navy in the Black Sea during the Second World War. The time has come for us again to establish a naval force like no other, one that will prove capable of destroying enemies at sea long before they reach land. We'll start by expanding our shipyards, recruiting the best available sa sailors in Russia, and constructing the most up-to-date vessels. Oh, did you look at that? Oh, this will be for equipment. Actually, how close are we for equipment? Eh, uh, you know. China, China modernizes. Not bad, Sean. Not bad at all. Get a synthetic refinery, thermal electric plant, infrastructure, and admin office. That ain't bad. Oh, look at that. Wait, how do we get all this extra money? Oh, because of investments. Nice, 4.2%. Yearly plus. We're spending a lot on the civilian stuff right now. Which is fine. I think we go to war in 1971. So we got to keep an eye on that. Probably starting in October, we'll probably change things around, maybe. We'll see. Uh, for you guys, throw on logistics because you're going to need it. You're definitely, 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 definitely going to need it. Boot on the Armored Corps. Nice. And the new Hussars, of course. And then we'll switch to trees. Less than a billion in debt. Now that's nice. I can say that too. I have less than a billion in debt. 
4%, 100% research bonus for ships. Wow. So useful. It was, in the end, the budget that decided it for them all. Not tactics, not armor specifications, not even the opinions of the tank crews themselves. The budget simply didn't have enough room for the additions of tank units to the regiments of existing armored corps. It'd be necessary to consolidate, reconsolidate their existing assets into a single unit and retrain them day and night until they could perform the roles they missed. So the People's Hussar Division, as it was known, no one could remember the actual number and reference, <clears throat> was formed, and the farmers and the sons and daughters watched the tanks move row onto row in distant fields made towards the base where they were to be christened in a new name and mold. And there, you were, there were failures, as there always were. A few of the new models fresh from the factory had broken down in a muddy field, and no one was sure yet if it was equipment failure or the planning error that had brought them down. The rest of the models were dragged onto the main road and confined to purely motorized activity until something could be done with them. Town would tell if they needed a new uh, rebuild or if they could simply serve as a supplementary function to, in the motorized corps. Even so, as the base commanders noted the plates and licenses of the tanks arrayed, there was reason for celebration. This new division already had plans in the works for a full-blown multi-branch exercise, and some whispered that his commanding officer was a glory hound who would push his men to the limit. There was a sense of general anticipation. This one, if it was believed, would go far and would take the Republic with it. Let us hope it'll make a difference. Well, we'll see. We'll definitely see. 5.8%, huh? 5.3%, uh, 1.3%, not bad. Uh, down, 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 and almost completely down. Russian Republican Navy, and then Russian reunification! Even though I want to do more of this stuff, eventually we gotta move on from this, which does suck. Now that's pretty nice. That's actually really flippin' nice. But don't want to forget about guns and stuff like that too, which I totally didn't forget about. Totally didn't forget. Let's start building up a uh, nuclear program as well. Property. Yeah, it's nice. And. There you go. Nice. We well, as much as I want to the next one. The Fisherman's Dream. Yemoth. Yefimova's father whispered dreams to her when she was a child. Dreams of a shining fleet of ships, flying the red ensign in unison. Each ship, he had told her, was far bigger than the fishing junk that they shared. They had guns, ammo, stores, quarters for dozens of people on each ship, and the burnished steel stone like gold, uh, shining like gold in the sun's rays, like some forgotten treasure brought to light. Of course, that had been a long time ago, and he had whispered, and now the Republic they were in was landlocked, and the dream for now was dead, but with one day the Great Fleet would rise again, and Russia would one day take to the seas, perhaps not in a lifetime, but one day. The FMO vote listened as the cold winds drifted about their junk as she grew, she learned. She taught herself not nothing, sailing, drifting, using only the stars and the harsh northern spirit for navigation, and she grew in her wisdom. Their fishing fleet expanded from one to a half dozen. She grew in powerful, but when the Republican Navy had sent its letter of invitation, she knew what she had to do. A vision, after all, was worthless if not fulfilled. She wished her father could see her now, standing upon the deck of the Republic's latest vessel. It has been foolish, and perhaps a little bit too attached to a drink at the end. <clears throat> but he never wavered, and her dreams were his dreams, too. And watching the flag fly above a silver sheen ocean, gulls flying overhead as the engines whirled. Yefimova felt something in her heart glow. Her father, wherever he was, could rest now. His dream was here. In the flash, and she was living it for him. Could you see me now, Dad? I made it. The 1970 election. It's time for a new election. The usual suspects are running fierce campaigns to make their way to the top, and as always, one will become the Russian helms helmsman for the next few years. Of course, considering <clears throat> our current position as master of Western Russia, whoever wins the presidency is likely going to go down as history as the one who finally made the nation a whole again after nearly 30 years of strife. Such facts are not lost in the contenders, each having their own ideas of how the reunification should play out. Nice. Uh, I'm sorry, we can't do this anymore. Election year. We're going to build this. Please go ahead. Yes, and P. Yes, please. Now we're going to save like before because even though I campaigned hard earlier for the DSMP, well, we still lost. <clears throat> Which going I don't understand, but whatever. Made no sense to me. But let's see. It has to be 71, right? Yeah. Oh, election polling. Overpowering, uh, very significant, oh boy. Well, if that doesn't go well, then I'll do some funky stuff off-screen make sure that we do win no matter what. But the elections! Everyone loves the elections. Well, I don't. But the DSMP campaign, the People's Democratic Socialist Republic has always been a powerful voice in the, the Republic's politics, ever since the party stood beside Nikolai Vosnesensky and when he founded it. However, the party has also been a consistently divisive topic, as Vosnesensky has proven to be a problematic figure even at the best of times. A newcomer, Alexander Yakovlev, wishes to change the party's troubled reputation. He's now running a campaign based on the ideals of democratic socialism, free from the mistakes made by the party in years past. Only ten will tell if his old, old promises will pay off. And into wonders, of course, a power play. To the surprise of everyone across the country and beyond, Alexander Yakovlev, an up-and-coming politician from Arkhangelsk, uh, Oblast, 
has won the pri primary to be the candidate of, of the People's Democratic Socialist Party. Origi considered a dark horse candidate for the party nearly beat out his moderate opponent. For years, Yakovlev has been representing the DSNP's left wing for years, advocating for a stronger left wing economic policy, and has led the charge against the party's economic liberalization. This, combined with the support among the former Front Hill regions, has now catapulted him into the status as a major presidential candidate. While many on the right of the DSMP grumble about Yakov Lev, the center and the left wing are openly congratulating the candidate on his victory, and expected to have even greater representation in the National Assembly weather. He can win the presidency, however, remains to be seen. Let's see what this youngster can do. Let's see. Hey, 40% world spirit. That's, that's not bad. Could be better, but that ain't bad. 5.9% growth, less than a billion, 5.4 billion. Independence for the League of Arab Sheikdoms. Huh. Ethiopia has no poor. Our actually do be looking kind of thick. Not bad. Not bad. And the new reformer. The meteoric rise of the Iron Governor, Konstantin Katusheva, has continued unabated as he recently secured the leadership of the SMR as a whole and thus its nomination for the upcoming presidential election. Leveraging his enormous personal support and political influence within Ninsi Novgorod in the wake of the three time SMR candidate Alexei Kosygin's recent announcement of retirement, he moved quickly to position himself as a candidate for succession, although the other senior party figures did soon do the same thing, much as they did in his early gubernatorial election. Katushev's early advantage and quick action proved decisive, and he was elected leader of the SMR on the first ballot. This surprised many observers, who were expecting multiple rounds of negotiation by candidates among the SMR caucus, however, as he was evidenced. As was evidenced, the increased in degree of party centrality upon Ninsi Novgorod overwhelmingly favored Katushev, and support for the other contenders was seen to quickly collapse among the contingents of the SMR deputies not already from districts in and around the city. Having secured his party nomination, Katushev is soon, along with the candidates put forward by the other parties, expected to begin his national campaign for the presidency. While many have expressed certainty that the policies of the young reformers are likely to find little support outside urban centers, others have been quick to identify Katushev's skills at attractingly packaging SMR ideology, only to tell which opinion proves correct, all but inevitable. Cater to the working class. The DSNP, above all, serves the working classes of the Republic. There is no reason to com grow complacent, however, as the other parties are already seeking to encroach upon our most important base of support. Alexander Yakovlev already has plans to tour the industrial centers of the nation and to publicly shake hands with the most influential workers' councils in our cities. With the councils on our sides, we may have an easier time organizing future campaigns, but most importantly, however, the show of good faith will restore the workers' confidence in our party and once again solidify our voters' bases. Uh, Central Russia would be very good to do again. Central Russia... Consolidate them. Uh, we probably oh, what do I want to do? Significant Western Siberia. We're gonna really climb down where we're at. Maybe trans Urals. Oh, look at this. We're acceptable now. Nice. We actually got five percent more stability because of this. That's actually really nice. That's in half a billion in debt now. I say that's pretty darn nice, I'm not gonna lie. Plenty of engineers. Pulling update, alright. Gay to the working class, my friends. 6.3%, 1.1% debt to GDP ratio. I love capitalism. Yakov Love's speech. It's time for a return to the fundamental axioms of those who came before. A republic of the establishment of socialism. A world in which no man has too much or too little. An economy based upon the ideals of Marx and Engels. While the right may balk at us, the workers of the Union know who the true enemy is. Alexander Yakovlev's speech, officially announcing his candidacy for the president of the Komi Republic, has been well received by many in the left wing of the Democratic Front and beyond. While his candidacy has just been announced, Yakovlev has met with many trade unionists in both the core Komi territory and in the former Front territory, which were all met with positivity among working class voters and trade union bureaucracy. While many consider uh, Alexander Yakovlev to be a dark horse in this People's Democratic Socialist Party prim primary, an unexpected victory has since cap capitulated his already impressive political record at a new heights, his po powerful political connections in the front's former territory, in addition to the hard criticism of the right wing of the party, has made him the darling of the left wing of the, the Komi Republic. It may be seen, however, whether he can succeed his predecessor in maintaining order and stability within a young nation. He can talk the talk, but can he walk the walk? A new radical platform. The DSMP has long been an advocate for democratic socialism, even during the days of Osnesinski. However, 
Certain compromises and these ideals had to be made to ensure better cooperation with the coalition to stem the tide of radicalism. Now the storm has passed, the time has come for a new platform to reaffirm a commitment to socialism. Alexander Yakovlev has given the party the green light to make public this new platform, which is far more radical than anything we've ever seen before. It calls for a renewed push towards a democratic transition towards socialism, as well as a strict adherence to radical workers' rights policies. Women's rights, which were always present but never really the main focus, have been re-emphasized as part of the party's goals. These policies may be seen as a bold shift towards the far left, but Yakovlev is confident that this new direction will revitalize the party for years to come. Women's rights. Hmm. Hey, look. Is that more investment? Oh! Oh, we can actually invest it. Oh, we paid off all our debt! I love it! 7.7% 7 .7 real growth. Pulling update? Oh, boy. Oh, we're not sucking here too hard. Southern Urals is quite strong already. Trans Urals. Exceptional in the Ural region. Hopefully we do very well here. Strong. Maybe do Central Russia next. Keep our lead. Central Russia. And here comes the oil crisis. Oh, and actually, I don't want to forget about this stuff, too. Well, so much for having money. Goodbye. Oh, look at all that. I've already sent reinforcements to high, so we'll see what happens, how fast we can get reinforcements in here. 6%, now it went up to 16%, not bad. percent still new radical platform nice a new mandate as elections upon us hordes of citizens of course <clears throat> uh, can be seen rushing through schools public offices and other polling places in order to let their voices be heard by the high instances of power while they place their trust in hopes of a better future while by voting for their preferred parties and candidates the countdown starts as Russia's future is decided by its people and now we have a yearly surplus still nice Give us another month and maybe we'll invest some money. We'll see. Surplus is still not bad. That's actually really good. Keep training, keep training. You're only at what percentage? Ooh, 1970. Happy 1970, everybody. 36% strength is not good enough. But we're working on it. As you can see, we're definitely working on it. Okay, so that's not a lot, but... You can only invest so much and so much, and that barely gives you anything, so... Whatever. Nice. Minus 0.51 still. That's actually really good. The mono campaign, huh? Oh, boy. Hope, I hope we win. If we don't win, then it's not good. But... Oh! Bunch of administration is going to go up next time, too. Awesome! As well as very close for factory complexes to modern industrial equipment. Cutting edge is better, but whatever. We'll get there. Where are we at for our soldiers? All infantry? Might not be great to do, but 66% is pretty good. A new mandate. And who should we win? Let the best candidate win! Monrovia Falls. Ooh. We got more stuff here? Let's go with two, and then we'll go with... Wow, we have quite a few more. Then we'll throw in three more there, too. We need more rubber, though. The SMP wins elections! With the Russia's unification drawing close and closer, it's become clear that these elections may determine the fate of the entire motherland. The campaigns for this election have been fierce, with each of the three parties wanting to be the party that unified the motherland. In the end, the People's Democratic Socialist Party won the election with the new elected president Yakovlev giving his inaugural speech in front of the National Assembly earlier today. The People's Democratic Socialist Party are as old as the Republic itself, formed by its founder Nikolai Voznesensky. However, they are now under the new leadership, that of Alexander Yakovlev, a former member of the West Russian Re West Russian Revolutionary Front, Yakovlev has nonetheless made a name for himself within the Republic. More than any other candidate in the election, he has called for increasing ties to the OFN in America, and also expansion of welfare and social programs. With Yakovlev now possibly overseeing the unification of Russia, all of Russia waits to see how to determine the motherland's future. Russia and her children soon be united, they will finally have peace. Have I played as you before? I might have. Maybe not. I don't think I've seen your face, but I've heard of you before. Nice. Um, but we'll do socialism for the people. Alexander Yakovlev is no stranger to ridicule, the majority of which ironically coming from those ostensibly most aligned with their policies. They accuse us of some dreadful lacking for putting faith in the synthesis of Marx's theories and the market's temporary benefits. Serov believe we lack the vision to uplift Komi from his dilapidated state. Today, Siktivkar and his neighbor cities bustle with cars in the day and shine with electric lights at night. Bukharina believe we lack the interest to provide for the people's needs. Today, every worker and farmer in our payroll enjoys benefits that would foment jealousy in their counterparts outside Russia. Sosa believe we lack the strength to exert power over our immediate neighbors. Today, the Free Republic's flag flies in every government building west of the NSC. 
The conclusion is self-evident. We distinguish ourselves from the naive fool by proving our naysayers wrong as the Republic's generals and diplomats secure West Siberia for Russia's rightful government. Their doubting voices have returned in the past years were strings of flukes, or so they claim, surely. Yakolov can't enforce his wishful thinking onto another large swath of land and his peoples for the revolution's sake will prove them wrong before time. But if you'd like to read about it, enter the atomic age, establish close facilities, a foundation for research, address the uranium problem, spend the cricket mines, source for materials, and chase the sun, please go right ahead. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will go and fight the Siberian Republic, and I'll probably cheat and actually give this territory to the SR. Thanks for watching, have a great Russian Republic rest of your day.